Hey guys, I'm back out here and you know I finished this machine up the other day and uh, all I've done so far is just kind of fire it up and dry run it. I haven't tried cutting anything yet so uh, I had some time today so I, I thought I would hook this thing up. Uh, you can see I've got my quarter cable 690. That's my spare one that I kind of use for hand routing. Uh, so I put it in there. I've got a brand new CMT up spiral bit, quarter inch diameter that I'm going to be using. Uh, I've got uh, my, my 15 foot parallel cable came in as well as my other UC100. Uh, as I mentioned the other day, I kind of stole the one from the old green machine over here to just to test this thing out. But, uh, now I've got all this, so I just need to get this all hooked up and, and running, and it'll be run off of this laptop. I've got another laptop that's uh, practically identical to this one that I use for um, the old green one over there. So I'll actually be able, once I get all this going, I'll actually be able to be out here running both machines at one time if I need to. So, uh, But just today I want to get out here and try to do some test cuts. Uh, you know, I haven't done anything, like I said, I haven't tried to cut a thing, I haven't calibrated anything, and I just wanted to make a few test cut, you know, little test pieces and measure them just to see where I'm at from the, from the get-go here. So we'll see how close or how far off it may be, and then we'll uh, dial it in as needed. So anyway, let me get this thing fired up, and we'll make some test cuts. Okay, I took uh, VCAR Pro and just created a little sample test piece here. Uh, it's going to be a just a three inch square block. I'm also going to use a pocket to cut a uh, one inch diameter hole right in the center of it. That way I can tell if the hole's oblong or lopsided or plus to check the dimension of the hole to see how accurate that is. Uh, I'll be able to take my calipers and make sure how close I am to being 3x3. Three three. Um, and I can also take my little square here and make sure that everything is cutting square. I've already checked the uh, gantry, you know, brought it up and touched it off to make sure that it's not racked in any way. And it um, should be good to go. So we'll fire this thing up and see how it cuts. Okay guys, I finished my little test piece here. I actually, this is actually the second one I cut. The first one I cut, it started do, it started trying to just drill a hole right here and then I realized that I had another program in there called Test 1 or something very similar and I'd actually loaded the wrong test uh, or a test file. But So I went back, moved it over, I went ahead and finished cutting this one just for the heck of it. But, uh, Anyway, this is the right program, and I'm going to check with the uh, calipers here. We'll check this hole first. You can see I got a little bit of fuzzy. I haven't uh, sanded this at all. Uh, but the hole, just looking at it, looks pretty round. It doesn't look like it's oblong at all. And man, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is dead on one inch right there. Now let's do it. Turn it 90 degrees and measure it again. Yep, it is dead on one inch. So, let me try to get it measured a few different places. 
it's right there. No problems with uh, cutting the, the hole. Now this is supposed to be a three inch by three inch square block, so let's check the calipers here and see what I'm getting here. And it looks like I'm getting about uh, 2.985 that way. Let's turn it 90 degrees and see what it is this way. Yeah, pretty much the same thing, 2.985. So it is cutting nice, you know, the same dimension. Let's go ahead and pick it all the way around here. Yep. Yeah, so I'm about 2.985, which is 15 thousandths, and, you know, that's, that's less than a 64. So that's pretty good to not even having done the calibration yet. That won't be any problem to get that, uh, that dialed in. And then if I check with the square here, of course I've still got the tabs on here, so i got to make sure. So I'm getting a good square part all the way around. So that's good. There's no, uh, no candy wampus factor going on there. So that looks good. So this will be real easy. I just need to run the calibration in Mach 3 and uh, tweak this just a little bit. I've got maybe, well, I don't know if I have enough room on that piece, but i got another scrap piece there. I can run a couple more of these and uh, check it again after I do the calibration and see if I get... Uh, get it to come out three by three so but that's pretty darn close just for like I said just building the thing checking it with the carpenter square getting everything uh, squared up that way and you know like I said I haven't even done the calibration yet and I'm within 15,000 so very pleased with that that's, that's obviously would work for anything I any kind of work I do uh, but I can you know dial it in from there and probably get it to be uh, a little more precise Okay, so anyway, I guess that's going to do it for uh, this video. I just wanted to uh, get on here and show you how to do a test cut. That's what I would recommend when you first get your machine set up. You know, before you start, you know, if you've got a project already programmed, don't, don't throw that project on there with that pretty piece of material until you've uh, run some test pieces out of scrap, get your machine dialed in, and then, um, then use the, the good stuff. So. Anyway, I appreciate all my new subscribers. Thanks for uh, watching this video. If you like what you see in here, please hit the uh, thumbs up down below and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And that's going to do it for this one. We'll talk to you later. Okay, guys, I wanted to get back on here real quick. Uh, after I uh, got ready to shut the camera off a while ago, I got to thinking, you know, I don't have a dial indicator. So I thought, well, maybe there's another way that I can use that Mach 3 calibration and it will work. So I know it's not the way that everybody tells you how to do it, but uh, I thought, well, this is the first test piece I ran. And it was a little short. It was 2.985 or 15 thou short all the way around this thing. So what I did is I went to the Mach 3 calibration, went to the x-axis, I told it that I wanted to move three inches, and of course it moved, and then it says, well, what did it, you know, what did it measure? So I told it 2.985, and it automatically readjusted the steps per unit for me. So then I went back and did the exact same thing for the y-axis, because I'm cutting, you know, on the x and the y here. And, cut, and I went ahead and cut another piece here. And I hope that the camera will get it zoomed in good enough here to, so you can see what that is. But I'm at about, uh, about one thou over, it looks like. Maybe a couple. Uh, yeah, about one and a half, two thou over three inches. So that worked out really good, uh, just doing it that way. And again, when I uh, measure the hole diameter, it's still right at one inch. So uh, I didn't mess anything up there. So. I just want to point that out that, you know, if, you, if you're like me and you don't have a dial caliper, uh, you know, you just cut a simple test piece, make sure you've got it to like three inches or whatever, measure with calipers, and then just put in the difference as your calibration uh, thing, and it will automatically adjust those steps per unit. So, 
since that worked, I just wanted to share that with you. Okay, so anyway, just wanted to share that with you real quick. Like I said, I know that's not the way they tell you how to do it. They always say use a dial indicator and all that, but I thought, you know, just logically thinking, I thought, well, you know, it seemed like it would work to me, and sure enough, it uh, worked pretty good. So, so now I've got it within uh, two thou of what I wanted to cut, and the hole's still right there. Like I said, the hole's still got, you know, fuzzies and stuff on it anyway, but it's still uh, right there within a thou or two as well. So. Just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, all right, so now this is going to do it for that video. So, uh, like I said, if you have, if you like this video, hit a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you haven't already got your GAT and CSE kit, uh, I'll put a uh, link in the description of this video where you can click to go get one. And uh, you know, like I said, they're a lot of fun. And as you can see, you can get them very, very accurate, even for a plywood machine. So. Anyway, that's it guys. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching.